representing people injured as a result of other people's negligence for over 50 years here in South Florida. If you get injured as a result of somebody else's negligence, it can be a car accident, it can be a slip and fall, medical malpractice, negligent security. If somebody else's negligence caused an injury to either you or one of your loved ones, give us a call. Our phone number is on our page, our website is on our page, and our email addresses are on our page. Please give us a call for a free consultation. We'd love to help you. Let Zach and I protect your rights. Hey, it feels incredible. Welcome, everybody, to Fish on First Live, presented by Burger and Hicks. My name is Noah Berger. I am your host tonight. Uh, we have Eli, of course, our um, uh, managing editor and founder and uh, controlling everything behind the scenes. Daniel Rodriguez and Nate Car Karsmer are here as, as our panelists and special guests today. You know, you've you seen him here a ton of times. You know him from the inaugural Jeopardy, um, John Rodriguez, and also we have David Fernandez. Um, we're going to go through the because we have to against our better judgment, we're going to go through what happened over the weekend against the pirates, even though none we of us to want to talk about it. Now, even none of us want to talk about it. Um, we'll get into some flip fish. We'll talk about the injury updates. Um, and then we'll get into the series against the angels. We'll have a press box report and everything, but I just want to get everyone's general thoughts about the pirate series. Keep it PG. Eli, we'll start with you. It, it was, uh, yeah, on most fronts, pretty terrible, unfortunately, right here. Uh, as you see with with opening day, opening day, I thought was the best game. Uh, it's hard to really put a damper on the start of the season. And I thought there was a lot of good for the first like six endings of that uh, before, including at the very end with the way that my guy Declan Cronin pitched into extra innings. I thought that was a thrilling game and one where, you couldn't be too emotional about the win or the loss. It was really beyond that. It, not being able to salvage any of those three other games uh, the rest of the way. That was unacceptable, especially when, like, given the opponent you're going up against where, I mean, it's a fine team, but the Pirates are not a, like, this felt more like the Marlins pissing away these games than it was the Pirates really grabbing them. So that the way that they lost these games is what's frustrating. Opening day, uh, there was early on, there was a, a point where they had a win probability over 90%. And it was the same way in the series finale. I mean, it was that final game that I think a lot of people were banking on them somehow eking out. It is so hard to lose four games to the same opponent, especially when you're at home. And when you have, I guess on the position player side, a lot of the hitters that you wanted entering the season, they're healthy in that side of the ball. So the way that that, last game one in particular to jump out to that big lead and feel like you should have been able to hold on to that lead the rest of the way. Um, the, the fielding was atrocious really in all four games. That was the one constant to me is how poorly they played defensively the, in the pitching in, in most of these games was also just really disappointing. Uh, most more of that on the bullpen than on the starters, but I mean, it was, well, it was on really any, it's hard to say that, they fired that they played up to their potential in any facet of the game. There was, there was just so much going awry throughout this. And uh, yeah, it puts them in a hole that they have not been in, in 23 years. That is the last time they started a season with four straight losses. Daniel, your thoughts. Um, overall, I would say I was really disappointed. Um, I would say probably the number one thing I could come up to me was just the abundance of bullpen arms that the Mormons had to use. Um, not one starting pitcher going above five innings, I believe really hampered the bullpen and really showed um, how much they are missing Yuri, how much they're missing Sandy, Braxton Garrett. Um, it, it really shows that. I was really disappointed again, you know, with the pitching overall, I would say. A.T. Puck did not look good at all. Um, Ryan Weathers had flashes, but again, we have, I believe, 85 pitches or so through. I Four innings getting into five. It was 
not good at all. Trevor had ups and downs, but I would say there were more downs going into Trevor than there were ups. And uh, and Luzardo looked okay um, for his first start of the season, but I would say starting pitcher, starting pitching um, is a really bad sign so far for the Marlins. Let's see if Max Meyer can uh, can improve upon that. Let's see if he can get through five innings. If he can get through, if he can get to six, that'd be great. But so far, it has not been great starting pitching wise for the Marlins. Now, uh, David, let's hear your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to echo a lot of what's been said already. It was incredibly disappointing. Um, and then, I mean, frustrating, too, because I think um, they had the opportunities to to win at least two of those games. Um, but, you know, the, the it was the little things here and there that extended innings, you know, pitchers walking guys, the defense not making, you know, the the play when they when they could have or should have. Um, you know, it was just kind of frustrating all around and then not getting the big hit on, you know, on opening day. And then, you know, yesterday, not uh, not getting the big hit when they needed it either. And just like just it was a, it was a frustrating watch as a Marlins fan, which leaves you a little worried, you know, overtaxed bullpen already. And, you know, I guess we'll see how it plays out. But if they win tonight, I mean, they started one and four last year. So, you know, we'll see, I guess. They're Nate. Yeah, I'm with everyone else. Extremely disappointing. You don't want to overreact too much, but I did have the Marlins winning three out of four. Um, really couldn't put the Pirates away in the first game. Couldn't get that big hit. Uh, I forgot what we uh, what the Marlins are with one of them scoring position, but can't be that good. All the double plays when they had chances to extend the lead. You go back to the first game and that first inning when they started starting, I think it was the second. They had second and third, nobody out, and couldn't get those two guys across, and that they ended up losing by one. And then in the last game, uh, 5-0 lead, really hate to blow that one, but even they came back and then Tanner Strzok could get the job done. And the middle two games really just kind of got dominated from the start, really didn't feel a lot of energy and then kind of just rolled over. But what mainly stood, what mainly stood out to me was the three pitchers that um, rolled out in games two, three, and four, they all had chances to impress in their first appearances. Uh, disappointed in Puck and Weathers, but I know Puck had trouble gripping the baseball. So, like I said, don't want to overreact too much, but I'm with everyone else. Uh, disappointed. And finally, John. Yeah, I pretty much agree with what everybody has said so far. I do want to mention that in the first game, at least in the first few innings, it really did feel like a lot of the hint of what the Marlins left behind in 2023 as far as their play. They looked aggressive right off the bat. They were hitting the ball. Um, pitching was, you know, uh, getting out. Um, I think it just started to derail over time once the bullpen came in and the clutch, there was no clutch whatsoever in that first game um, being in attendance, you know, it, it, it was a good fight. It was an entertaining game. Second game completely slipped out. Third game, you could say the same fourth game, you know, <laughs> you can't be blowing games like that. I mean, it was, you know, grand slam should get you at least some level of comfort. But, um, yeah, when everything is not going your way, it doesn't work like that in baseball. Defense can't be making those little mistakes because uh, they're going to cost you games and they're going to cost you wins. Do we want to look at the series prediction leaderboard from the, from, uh, the results from the last series? Or is let, that for the end? Let's see if I – well, I think I can find it. Thank you for reminding me because I'm still getting into the routine from last year. But that is what we usually did last year. We pull it up relatively quickly early on i think i have it right here that absolutely nobody on our staff our stream or our super subs predicted the pirates <laughs> to win the series not even our pirates guest austin there's, there, there's a rule there's an unwritten rule the against picking missing. against the marlins in opening series yeah so the only points went out to people that had jake Berger as mvp as uh as lmf pointed out in the chat he was six runs batted in yeah, I think at least one in three of the four games. So yeah, he was good. Even he defensively was not particularly sharp, but at least offensively he was. So that is one positive way because with him, it is a huge, he's somebody that he hits so well at the end of last season that if that is really who he is as a player, he's an important building block for their franchise moving forward. He is under control for a bunch of years, really inexpensive. And that is a big th storyline to monitor this year going forward is like how close he can be to sustaining what he did after the trade last year. So at least he got off to a good start in that regard. 
And another player that looked really great in the series for a little bit, Josh Bell. Um, I don't have his stats pulled up because I, I'm terrible at pre-preparation for these streams. Um, but he looked really great. Uh, there were a couple at bats that he kind of gave away, especially in the later innings, but everyone was doing that and it wasn't really that awesome. Um, but there you see the stats right there. Um, still no hitting out of the catcher position, but your catchers are supposed to catch, not hit. Um, that's my opinion. Still like them to hit. Um, zero about, hits so far. Zero hits. Zero hits. Well, the, It'll, it'll happen eventually. Arias was the real shock of the of the of the beginning of the season that he wasn't really hitting at all. He went over thirteen before getting his first hit, and it was just like, uh, what? But no one, you're not. We're not worried about Luis Arias. He'll get his hits. He'll get his average up to three hundred. It's it, it, he's Luis Arias. He'll do it. At, at, he'll do it every time. So I'm not not really worried about that. Getting the start of the season, um, the pitching is something to be worried about. Bullpen's exhausted, absolutely exhausted. Um, they had to call up Kent Emanuel today, um, which we'll get to. And they Vladimir Gutierrez gave them how many innings? He gave them four innings. It was like 80 pitches. And what's your reward for that? Hey, goodbye. You get DFA'd. Um, Declan Cronin's probably going to come back up at some point. Um, if, if they need another new arm, right now it's Kent Emanuel's job. Do I trust Kent Emanuel in a big league game? Absolutely not. Um, but if a game gets out of hand, it's going to be Kent Emanuel on the mound. You hope it doesn't get to that point. Um, we'll go into the injury report and all of that. Um, if you could pull up the injury report, which now Max Meyer is going to be coming back from injury first time he's pitching since I think it was 2022. Um, um, really quickly, Noah, before we get into that, I, I wanted to ask, um, what was everyone's thoughts on, on the new guys so far this season? Uh, you know, Tim Anderson, uh, again, there with the uh, OPS looking like he was last season. Defensively, again, Tim Anderson, not really what you're really hoping for. And, you know, Christian Bethacourt has not hit the ball at all. Same thing with Nick Fortes. And we have Nick Gordon with the one hit having been home run. But aside that, has not looked good at all. And Vidal Brujan, again, has not impressed at all. Just uh, everyone, like, what, what's everyone's thought on the players uh, before we get into that injury report? Sorry to cut in, Noah, but I, I want to know, like, what, what does everyone think on these new guys? Well, we'll start with David on that. I mean, the bright side is – the bright side look would be that it's only four games, you know, and guys are going to struggle from time to time. Um, you know, it's just unfortunate that they're all sort of slow to start out of the gate. Um you know, hopefully they can they can produce a little bit more, and you know, but uh, yeah, it, it's uh, it's not a great start, that's for sure. We'll go on the Nate. You didn't mention Jonah Bryant. He had a chance to really make a great first impression on opening day and uh, drive in the winning run in extras, but that didn't happen. Um, Tim Anderson had a uh, good first at bat, kind of struggled after. Um, really hope Beth and Court gets going, but. I don't don't want to overreact again to the first four games, but so far, um, I'm not not too pleased. John, yeah, I would agree on the fact that you know it's the first four games, but I will mention another thing is Tim Anderson's defense. I don't know his throws to first; they kind of seemed a little bit lazy. I guess is the word. <laughs> um, the way he would just kind of be on his knee and then wait a bit and then throw. There was like a delay between throws, and then the throw itself wasn't. Good throws, particularly. I know there was a, this play on opening day where Josh Bell had to literally run over and then throw the ball over to home to then nail the runner. I don't know. It's It's been a little bit messy. But for the first four games, you know, we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. So far, Rocky, though. Uh, just want a little defense of Vidal Brujan here on the play that the GIF here. He made a great play and made a great throw. Jake Berger lost 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 his positioning and wasn't on the bag that was a beautiful play by Bruno. Yeah, those, those, those are the been... little things though that that have like piled yeah. up that extends the innings exactly. and things like that and it, it's just it's like those little plays that you would think should be or could be made you know and and that's the that was the most frustrating part this weekend watching like they should have had an out there but they didn't and then you know things went the way that they did yeah and skip was always oh preached a lot last year you got to do the little things right he always preaches that and they're right now not doing the little things right and it's costing them games it's cost them every game um 
and it's just it's just not good to see. You want the team to be like they were last year where they did all the little things right. Yeah, they grounded into a bazillion double plays. They're on pace for like a thousand more this year. Um, but you want them to just go back to basics, do those little things right, and the wins will come. Um, and uh, I think now is a good time to get onto the injury report uh, and talk about the upcoming series against the Angels before we get into them. We'll get flip fish, the commercial break, all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, from Kevin, who's on site today with Isaac, Edward Cabrera threw three innings, 43 pitches to AAA, JT Shagwa worked out in Jupiter. He's begun throwing, which is a huge step for him. He hadn't been throwing at all. Uh, Xavier Edwards is hitting is hitting and throwing in Jupiter. Uh, Xavier Edwards was dealing with that nasty infection in his foot. Um, and he's it's good to see him getting back to work. Uh, Braxton Garrett scheduled to pitch three innings, 50 pitches in extended spring training. I, I think it's tomorrow. Josh Simpson's also expected to, to throw an inning. It's good to see him getting back on the mound. He was devastated when he had to go, when he had to get uh, sidelined with his injury. Um, Yuri Perez is still throwing. There are videos of him throwing today, and we'll throw a bullpen in the coming days. That's good to see. It's still just on, good to see know. all these guys making progress. And for once, We've got an injury report in the regular season where we don't have an update on six, though. <laughs> yeah, so that was I, that was an interesting storyline last year where I was like, I was being a little bit, you could say, um, obnoxious about it. About he was on the injury report, even though he wasn't on, wasn't like he was supposed to be back. Like he was supposed to, it wasn't like clear whether he was. He was so far removed from his most recent surgery that I just thought like. It was it was in a very hazy area with him, but yes, I'm I'm glad you you brought that up that he is no longer on this one. We saw a couple appearances from him in, in real games. We didn't even touch on that, but that was kind of a smaller footnote in the course of the last series here with Edward. I, I saw a good portion of that start, and his velocity is all the way back to what it was supposed to be. He was topping out at 99, and he was sitting really consistently 97, 98. He just had no idea where it was going. He walked, I think, four guys in those three innings. Um, and a lot of those were four pitch walks or ones where they were just non-competitive misses. So with him, I think realistically, it's going to be at least two more, maybe even three more rehab starts because he needs to get stretched out. And then he also needs to be more, he looks even less in control of his stuff than he was last year at the big league level. So with him, he's still a few weeks away. But progressing and then Braxton is pretty well aligned with him because you, it's all a lot of it is about just getting them built up and you see the pitch counts right there where Braxton is going to be in that same range once he throws tomorrow. So both of them could um they'll be they're kind of on similar tracks in terms of when they'll be ready to rejoin the rotation. Still a couple weeks between now and then. And now the question is, you know, how well can they tread water? Because we'll get into this Angel series is a great opportunity for them to get closer to where they're supposed to be. But after that, the schedule gets a lot tougher again. Um, so yeah, it's these next, this is a very vulnerable time, even though it's early in the year and a tiny sample size that could dig themselves a pretty deep hole right here. And in terms of with Edwards, um, because I felt there were times in this past series where I felt they missed him where offense missed John Birdie a lot. Yes. Whether in Edwards is like the most capable replacement for Birdie that they have uh, in terms of being able to play several infield positions if you need him to, and the way that he runs, of course, the way that he makes contact, and even what he does situationally as a hitter that we saw towards the end of last year. In his absence, there it's a pretty significant drop-off to Jonah Bride in a lot of those situations or Vidal Bruhan, who doesn't give you much of anything offensively, unfortunately. Um, and, yeah, so they – Maybe they win an extra game. They win one of those games if Edwards is available off their bench instead of one of those other guys. But with him, you see hitting, you see throwing. But for a guy coming back from a foot infection, you want to really see running. And um, I guess we could confirm with the team about that. But if he's that would probably be the last thing for him is to get back running. So I think he's still, you would think, a little while away from being available as well with this. So everybody progressing in the right direction. Um, nobody on their current team really dealing with much of anything injury wise, but this is aside from that rotating carousel of long men at the back end of the bullpen, the, this, they're kind of stuck with the current group they have for the next few series. It seems with uh, Edwards specifically, uh, even when he was like 
in the worst of the throws of the infection in his foot. He was still doing upper body work. He was still uh, taking swings in the cage. He was he was doing jogging out on the fields. Um, he just couldn't run because his foot was in a ton of pain. And I saw him limping around the clubhouse and I told him not to, but he showed me the infection. It was not pretty. Um, and it's it. He should be back. Of all the people, of the guys on this list, I think he'll be the first one back. Um, so I I wanted to get Eli. Maybe you, do you think that's a good estimate that he'll be the first guy back? Probably. In that case, uh, yeah, these I, these guys are really on se- relatively similar tracks when you're talking about two to three weeks in these cases, if not a little bit sooner in some, but yeah, it's nothing imminent is, is what we can say. And that is, that's kind of a a question right here is how they make it through in the meantime, where the pieces don't totally fit together. um, Where aside from a Lizardo, they can't really rely on any of the starters pitching deep into games where on the position player side, defensively, you have way too many guys that are, just below average at their positions and they the, they compound each other's issues on balls and play and then on the bullpen side kind of rocky spring training for Tanner Scott and he looks okay but um they were really counting on him to be a problem solver at the end of games somebody that you can even look at yesterday's game as somebody that you think could single-handedly keep that game scoreless and when aside from him and Nardi has looked a little up and down so far as well, the drop off from them to there's a lot of question marks in that bullpen. So there's just not really, I was thinking about this because I'm going on a Phillies podcast tomorrow to give like an overview of the team. They're talking about like, what we feel is the strength of the team and, or the one that is uh, going to be, leading them or carrying them to success right now. And there's just, to me, there's no strength of this team. You you really have to default to like an individual player. Like you could say that Luis Arise, at least they have Luis Arise and they know what they're getting from him. But in terms of like overall, there's, there's just a lot of deficiencies here. I don't know how you can string together extended winning streaks with this current group. I think now is what now would be a good time to get into the flipped fish. Um, I don't know what the answer is. Um, and I always forget how the format of this goes. So Eli's going to have to walk me through it. You're muted, Eli. <sighs> we started doing this early on last year with flipped fish, where we choose a player who formerly played for the Marlins as well as their opposing team. We give you. 45 seconds to try to figure it out just based on a few clues from their uh, baseball reference page that we have here. I think I found my teaser here. Uh, The one that we did last week, I thought was pretty easy with the pirates. We did Bobby Bonilla and everybody seemed stumped by that one, but uh, this one is actually more difficult, even though it is more recent. Uh, Here's what we have. The former Marlins and angels player, a center fielder, right-handed hitter, He's about to, it's almost his birthday. His birthday, his 37th birthday is coming up, but he's recently retired. Long, big league career. As you see, his overall offensive numbers, a little bit below average for his position, um, but he stuck around a long time. And I guess the only hints I can give you is that he was well traveled beyond just the Marlins and the Angels, several other teams in addition to that. Uh, feel free to comment who you think that might be. As I'm looking at the comments and I see somebody commented, pretending to be me among our staff. We'll have a conversation about that later, but we'll go into our break. And then when we come back, try to guess who it is that this flip fish player is stick with us. We have been representing people injured as a result of other people's negligence for over 50 years here in South Florida. If you get injured as a result of somebody else's negligence, it can be a car accident, it can be a slip and fall, medical malpractice, negligence security. If somebody else's negligence caused an injury to either you or one of your loved ones, give us a call. Our phone number is on our page, our website is on our page, and our email addresses are on our page. Please give us a call for a free consultation. We'd love to help you. Let Zach and I protect your rights. It is not Monte Harrison. Thank you, Kevin. Dang it. He'll be joining us in just a few minutes on the Press Box Report. I know who it is. 
What do you think it is? He put himself out on Twitter the other day. He says he wants a a shot at broadcasting to announce games. Is it this gentleman? (laughs) (laughs) Yes, it is. Cameron Maven, baby. Juan was the first one that got into the comments, but LMF as well. And it is, yeah, Cameron Maben, who had two separate stints with the Marlins. People remember the Florida days and then coming back. Oh, that's just say 2018. Yeah, 2018 Marlins when he came back um, to be that mentor to Lewis Brinson and the other young outfielders they had. And he played, he had a like, one month stretch right before they traded him away again, where he showed some interesting stuff. But he, overall, he played for nine or 10 different major league teams in his career. All right. Well, we got our answer. Yes. I was, I said something and was responding to something. That was a brain fart on my, on my part. Um, just a few minutes. We'll have the press box report, but we'll start previewing the angels series coming up. We got Max Meyer throwing today against, Oh, was it? Um, oh, press rocks report guys are here. Oh, um, we, can, we don't need to bring them in right now. They come in at their own pace. Can yes, I have man. a Isaac? Can I pose a question yeah. before going to the press box report? Of course. I wanted to talk about the the catching position. I saw you know someone. I I believe God Peter might have put this out there, or might have been um, Sean about Joey Bart, a potential fit for the Marlins. Um, we have Marlins have not had a hit from the catch position so far this season. Um, is really looking, you know, really suspect that position. Joey Bart, again, once what was once a top prospect, people you could say that he was rushed to the Giants, tried to fill a spot for Buster Posey when his sudden retirement came up. And uh, again, if you do pick him up, I believe there's four years of control. I believe you pick up someone like Joey Bart that instantly improves the catching position. I would much rather have him over someone like Christian Bethacourt or even Fortes to a point where we could see with Joey Bart just because of his potential. Uh, I'd love to hear everyone's thoughts on your stance on Joey Bart as a potential fit for the Marlins, you know, and, and him coming up would easily put him up there in, in the entire organization and the farm system. He doesn't have any options, right? So you, it's not just a 40 man you have to fit him onto. You have to fit him onto the active yeah. roster. Does that mean you DFA Fortes or send down Fortes? Does you send down Bethancourt? I don't think so. You got to give Fortes at least a chance to prove himself for a little bit of this season. It's just, it's not the right time to make, to, to make it to take a flyer on a guy like Bart. What, D- David, what do you think? I mean, I'm with you. Like, it'd be nice to have him. Um, but I mean, you just, you got to see what you have first with, uh, Betancourt and, and Fortes, I mean, there's no real help coming anytime soon from Jacksonville. Win, Will Banfield isn't ready yet, I don't think. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so maybe if these guys continue to struggle, you think about Joey Bart because, um, you know, for as, as, as many strides as Banfield made last year offensively, and he is probably ready defensively, um, but he's just not there with the bat. And if we need a bat, then, you know, you, you probably got to look outside – the organization at that point. So, you know, if, if Betancourt and, and Fortes continue to struggle, then maybe, um, but I don't know that I'd pull the trigger right now. Uh, John, what do you think? Man, I think like a team like the Marlins, you just can't say never to any of these opportunities. When you have a player like Bart, who's not even 30 years old yet, I think you take the gamble on him, see what he could do. Yeah, we have uh, Beth and Corey. I would give him some chance to kind of show for himself. So far, I haven't really seen too much. Again, four games. But um, I, I would say pull the trigger. Hey, maybe throw him down there in AAA, see what he does for a couple games. Maybe he turns it around. And if he's turning up some upside and he's giving you some stock to work with and you could bring him up, if one of your guys up in the major leagues is struggling, hey, you, you got to make those moves the Marlins are still in a very good spot to turn their whole season around. It's only game five of 162. So I think you could definitely take a shot at Bart. I'm not against it. Yeah. And I think David touched on it pretty well. Just the timing doesn't 
feel right for this this very early in the season to make a, a change like that. They they it's fairly easy to open up a 40 man spot and to option down Fortes in the process. Um, but it's still it's just really early. And you'd like to give him more extended opportunity if possible. Like there's just Bart may have slightly higher upside than Fortes does, but it, there really have not been sustained flashes of performance by him in the big leagues. You could say that even Fortes early in 2022 had was a better player for that stretch overall than Bart has ever been in the big leagues. And then defensively, Fortes has really worked hard to make himself an above average option back there. So I think it would be a more interesting proposition a month from now um, to bring him in uh, if Fortes is continuing to struggle a lot especially offensively. But yeah, for right now, I think they're standing pat with the current guys that they have. The, should they have done more in the off season? Yeah. They, they should have found, made some sort of investment in a better primary catcher than Bethancourt did. Uh, there weren't really great options there in free agency. It would have had to be a trade. Um, yeah, it was, it was a tough off season to be looking for stuff, but they went into this year um seemingly committed to giving Fortes a more extended run to prove that he's, he can't possibly be as bad a hitter as he was last year, just because decent contact skills and he showed flashes earlier in his major league career. So I think they're going to stick with him for a little bit longer, but maybe by the middle of the season, if he does not make any substantial improvement as a hitter, then this is something, this is the kind of guy they'll consider bringing off the waiver wire in the future. All right, I think it's. Oh wait, he's not at the at the computer, so we're not getting into our press box report yet. Um, we can start previewing the Angels series now. It's just an empty chair now. Um, we can start looking at the lineups for Game One that we have here. It's always fun to see Mike Trout. Is that Kevin? Kevin, you could come in for Isaac. <laughs> Let's see oh, your Anthony face, Kevin. Anthony Rendon going to work today. Anthony Rendon back in the house. Aaron Hicks going, is guys? starting right. There he is. Talk to Sorry, us. Yeah, Talk to was... us. All right. What do you want to know? We want to know um uh what do you think of the lineup? What's yeah. it, uh what did Skip say today? And just every just the general vibes. All right. Well, I think we gotta start with the injuries first. Edward Cabrera, it was a very successful outing yesterday at AAA Jacksonville, health wise anyway. Obviously, the command is not where you want it to be. Yeah, uh, health wise, I said, Mr. Eli. Um Skip alluded to the fact he'll probably get one more and then a second one more. So he's probably get three total and then he'll be ready. The third one should be around 85, 95 pitches and then he'll be ready. And then with Braxton, I think we all sort of found it peculiar that he was doing his rehab start tomorrow in Jupiter rather than Jacksonville like Eddie did. But I think from what I understand, he was maybe rehabbing already in Jupiter and it just was the easier trip for him rather than go all the way north to Jacksonville. So Braxton is going to get, I think, 50 pitches again tomorrow. I'm sorry. Yes, tomorrow, Josh Simpson is going to get one inning, 25 pitches. So Simpson, you're looking at a pretty – he could be joining the team if they need him pretty soon. And then Braxton, you'd think he's at least three to four uh, three to four rehab outings away from joining this team. But those were the good news. That was the good news. And you're restoring another bullpen in the next couple of days. What do you think of Kent Emanuel being the latest guy on the long man carousel to come out? Anyone that has a – go ahead. Well, I, was, I was a little surprised that Gutierrez had options left. I figured that they would find a way to not risk losing him. I, th I think he's had a decent chance of being claimed by somebody. And for all the effort they put into signing Gutierrez, right. and more, there's more good than bad in spring training. Um, yeah. I would agree. I would agree, especially because he can give you a lot of innings. Like you showed, I think he threw 80 pitches um, yesterday. And I think they were originally, if everything went well physically, I think they were willing to give him a major league deal. So it was pretty interesting that they decided to go against somehow trying to retain him. But nope, it'll be left-hander Kent Emanuel. I can't say that I know too much about this young man, except he did not have a great spring training. He does not have a great career so far, but he's going to be the first one out if you know things don't go well for max meyer today hopefully max keeps the game competitive he goes at least five you gotta pray to god someone in this rotation can go five or more five plus even because Luzardo, no one has gone more than five so they're really putting a lot of pressure on Max's shoulders today 
I heard that's your prediction a little bit later on on this series, but um, this Angels team is uh, it didn't play particularly well in their first series either. And no, like, yeah, so what's what's your general outlook on them coming into town? I mean, there's some fun names there. I, I remember Aaron Hicks was hitting second, I think, for the first series for the most part, right in front of Trout, but there's no more Shohei Otani. On this team, a former future Marlon Brennan Drury is going to be hitting fifth today. And the local kid, Nolan Shaniel, the FAU legend, and he has really gone off to a great start to his major league career. So I'm excited to see him. Anthony Rendon, just what a strange guy that guy is. I'm very excited to see him. Bad leadoff, which I found it very interesting. He's been hitting leadoff for this team so far. And then former first overall pick, Mickey Moniak, is still in this league. Uh, I don't know how. It's a very he's been nice. As a yeah, he's been nice. He's been nice. He's been resurrecting his career somewhat. But Have you seen Zach Neto at all? No. I, I wasn't down there for Angels the guy. BP. No, I was not there for Zach Neto. I did a couple former Marlins on the Angels, Matt Moore and um, Adam Simber. I, I thought maybe Matt Moore merited a, a flipped fish interview. It, didn't really uh, call me that much. And then Adam Simber, no, did not call me. But a couple left hander, uh, righty and a lefty in that bullpen that might that we might see tonight. So we shall see. And just want to confirm the roof is open. How are the shadows? Oh, God. Shut up, Noah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's worth asking, well, Jess. No what shadows. As I cool, let's get Andy Slater's thoughts on the on the <laughs> on the roof being open. No Slater scoop today, Kevin. <laughs> no Slater scoop. The roof is open. It's a beautiful night in South Florida in Little Havana. Um, the shadows are obviously a non-issue past I would say 5 p.m. local time. So uh, I I hate that that was brought up, but yeah. And- and how many dogs do you see around? I think this is. I the saw first that famous dog. What was the famous dog's name? Boogie. Brody. 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 Brody was here. Um, let me. That's a good oh, question. I don't sick. think they limit the dogs to the upper deck only anymore. I think the dogs are. Yeah, it's in all, the outfield. It's in the outfield seats. Only in the outfield. Okay. Well, I don't see a single dog. I would have brought Bryce, but I, apparently Zach Meadow has a, over a hundred family members here to get here today, and. I hate to say, but that must take up at least ten percent of the attendance tonight. Yikes! And I wish tomorrow I mean, would have drafted. Him. I just I wish one more time. We are what we're That's thirty minutes before first pitch. There were more people in my bar mitzvah than there are here right now, but they might fill up before six forty. So a lot of time left. That's a, that's another wasted pick from the Marlins. Yeah, and Loud Marlins fan. I wonder if he still thinks that Ryan De La Cruz is better than Christian Yelich after their starts of the season. <laughs> I wonder if he still thinks that. But how does uh, well, as long as I'm not the only one get how does how does Max Meyer look and how do you think he's getting ready for his like you could say his re debut. Right, right. He obviously is a starting pitcher today, so we've had zero access to him whatsoever. Mm-hmm. I didn't see him in the clubhouse. And I, this is my first game I'm covering this year, so hopefully they, they win with me in the ballpark. But no, I haven't seen any of Max Meyer. But from what I asked Skip about just sort of controlling those nerves for, like you said, his second debut, it's been over six, I think it's 608 days since he took the mound in Pittsburgh um, in June or July of 2022. And so he's obviously going to be have his nerves pumping, and he's just got to control it. Skip wasn't worried about him at all, though, because he's a, he's a very, very confident kid. And, you know, for some guys, you might have to go have a talk with him. But he said that with Max, he doesn't have to worry about that at all. So I don't know if that's good or bad, but we're going to find out very shortly. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm a big fan of the show. I hope you – we have a very special guest on our prediction video that we sent. We didn't okay. invite him, but he's going to join us. Is Brody, is he's, Brody the dog? Uh, he's yeah, Bobby, back to you, Eli. <laughs> he's a first-time predictor, as far as I know. I don't think he's ever been. Is he a first-time predictor? <laughs> yeah, he's a first-time predictor. But yeah, I can't wait. And yeah, that's it. Thank you guys for having me. I'm excited that you're at the stadium with Kevin. Yeah, I am too. <laughs> yeah, my Ooh. first game. Show us Andy Slater again. It's my 2024 debut. So, 
I love them. So um, maybe they do well. <laughs> talking to Bruce. <laughs> So we should talk briefly about Max making his return a uh, full season and a half removed from when he had Tommy John. He's, he's in a pretty big club. I mean, Vladimir Gutierrez was in the exact same position where he had Tommy John. Middle of 2022, he came back. Anthony Bender, when he he's the Marlins were leaning on him in the same situation here. But this is a little different. This is a guy that they think has the upside of being a significant part of their rotation throughout the entire season. The only righty their current rotation right now with him. I was, I was pretty high on him before he got hurt in 2022. I remember those, uh, maybe nobody else does, but at the time in 2022, it was a question of, should they stick with Eliezer Hernandez in that final rotation oh. spot or bring up Max is Max ready and good that, times. Yeah. And the feeling was that at least from my perspective, it seemed like they held Max down a little longer than he should have. He had this minor elbow scare, and they thought he dodged a bullet, and it turned out shortly after he finally debuted that that turned into something a little bit more significant here. It's been a long road back for him. Still some questions about him. Very least, what he does so well is this slider that is one of the harder sliders that anybody throws on this Marlins staff. Gets Has success against both lefties and righties. But it's everything else about him that begs the question about whether he's a reliever, best served as a reliever, or whether he could stick as a starter. So I am, that is no doubt going to be what I'm most focused on, at least for this first game of the series. Uh, Daniel, your thoughts on Max Meyer? I, I can't wait to see him come back. I, I was there for his opening, um, his first we game. We were both there. Uh, his debut. Yeah. With you, was it also against the Angels, I think? It was... I don't his debut? think so. I think it was, it was like Phillies. a chance. It was the a Phillies, the Phillies. Um, I'd like to see him go up against this lineup. Uh, I think, thankfully, now he doesn't have to see Shohei Otani, but him against Mike Trout will be fun there going up against the best in baseball. See what Max can do there. Uh, even a guy like Anthony Rendon, again, who has not had the best uh, start to his Angels career. Again, it could be happening there. I want to also see Nolan Shanuel against Max there. Um, Nolan has this, I believe, on base streak going on. I'd like to see what Max uh, could do up against them again. This is an interesting lineup, um, to have against him. Against you can go out, even to go against a lot of righties, um, lefties in the bottom of the of the order there for Max. But it'll be really interesting to see what he can do there and if he's can um, keep up with his velocity, his control, um, mixing in pitches. I know he hasn't had the biggest arsenal, but if he can mix what he can do against the angels i think it'll be very good and if you can get over five innings then that's what you want from max meyer especially in the bottom of the rotation the guy that's coming off tommy john if he can give you five and two thirds innings he can give you six innings and that's uh you take that you take that anytime especially with a guy coming off tommy john but going up with the first five i would say really interesting to see what uh, max can do up against them uh john your thoughts on max meyer I agree 100% with what Daniel said. I think Isaac also mentioned it on the fact that, you know, the team hasn't really pitched more than five innings. I think for a guy in this case, in Max Meyer's case, you're at least looking for those five. I think that's, I think for him, reaching at least the fifth inning is going to be, you know, the success. If he's able to um, maintain a stable pitch count um, despite coming from that injury, and pitching at least five or a little bit more, that's perfect because the rest haven't really made it that far. So it'll be a, a win in my book for Max, and I'm actually really excited to see him back on the mound. So definitely rooting for the kid. To answer LMF's question here about other rotation depth, that is Darren McCacken, who pitched on Friday and made a full-length start, had some success over there, but he's at least... He's, he's not rested to appear right now, and frankly, he's you know, he hasn't really earned an opportunity. He's in that same bucket as Gutierrez and Kent Emanuel, where they absolutely need him, and if it's on his proper throwing schedule, maybe he'll come up at some point later this month, but not imminent with him. Uh, let's go to Nate. Yeah, I think it was I'm higher on Max Meyer right now than other people. Um, liked him a lot as a prospect. I think you can definitely give Miami five today. I'm not facing the strongest Angels lineup, but definitely towards the bottom. Um, uh -huh. Like a 
think it was John that said, or it might have been Daniel, uh, see him face Nolan Shanuel and Mike Trout. It's going to be very interesting to see how his, uh, how his limited arsenal, I'd say, does against those two and the rest of the Angels lineup. But uh, definitely rooting for him. Hopefully he can um, show us something tonight, unlike the uh, other three that have had their chances so far. And David. Well, I mean, the the big question with Max Meyer when he was sort of, you know, moving through the system was where was he going to end up eventually? Was he going to be a starter or was he going to be in the bullpen? Right now, I mean, there's obviously uh, no question he needs to be a starter because that's what the staff needs right now. So I'm curious to see, you know, with this start, what does he turn out to be? You know, uh, I covered a few of his games up here in Jacksonville prior to his injury uh, and prior to his original call up. You know, so it'll it'll be interesting to see how he goes through a lineup a second time, a third time, something that, you know, he didn't really do uh, too much of prior to, um, you know, going down with, with Tommy John. So I'm curious to see, you know, where does he end up long term? Um, and, and tonight's going to start to finally give us some of that information. And I want to go around the room. Who are you uh, most excited to see from the Angels uh, going into this series, uh, other than Mike Trout, Daniel? Um, I, you know, Mike Trout, obviously. But I'm more interested in seeing the South Florida guys. I want to see Nolan and Zach Neto um, play. Isaac mentioned how um, Zach Neto has over 100 family members there. Nolan Shaniel from FAU right across the street up there in Boca Raton. I'm pretty sure he has to have family down here, maybe some coaches if they're not uh, playing today. But I want to see how they're going to do that. Nolan uh, going, I believe, just a total on base streak since his debut. I want to see how it continues that. Zach Neto, a guy who just called up very recently, it seems like, going straight from the draft to being starting shortstop for the Angels. Again, a guy the Marlins could have drafted um, in that draft not too long ago. But I'm really interested to see how they perform. I know they're going to have the juices flowing. Um, I'm not sure if this is Zach Neto's first time. In Miami, I know for Nolan it is. I want to see how they compete down here in South Florida, uh, relatively home for those two guys. For me, it's Logan O'Hoppy. So he's not even playing tonight, but I assume he's going to start the next two games. When he was healthy last year, he was awesome. And then mm -hmm. got that his injury kind of coincided with their season going down the tubes, even more so than Trout's injury it was him missing time. And I believe when he came back later in the year, he wasn't quite the same guy still put up like an 800 OPS as a catcher last year as a 23 year old catcher. So he is, um, he's a pretty important piece. And I think for this night in particular, <laughs> it makes Max's job a little bit easier that he's not in this particular lineup. David, who are you most looking forward to other than Mike Trout? Yeah, I mean, my answer is basically Danny's answer, too. I mean, I really want to see Neto because, uh, like Danny, I had really hoped that the Marlins would draft him. I thought that was a position of need at the time, and turns out it, it probably still is. Um, you know, but it was it was Neto. Like, so hopefully he gets in there and he's able to do something. Um, you know, I don't watch the Angels a ton, but I definitely wanted to see the local kid, the Coral Park kid. And uh, for Nate? Yeah, very similar to me. I want to see Nolan Shaniwell. Uh, he did it at FAU, and he's also right down the road from Boynton. He went to Park Vista High School, so he's local through and through. And uh, in addition, I want to see Anthony Rendon. He definitely killed the Marlins. Mm -hmm. I kind of took the Rams in the middle of killing the Marlins back when he was with the Nationals. So hopefully he doesn't do that, but I want to see how he plays uh, coming back to Lone Depot Park. And for John? Yeah, my pick is Anthony Rendon. He was a Marlins killer for the most part he did attack the marlins pretty well back with the nationals so now returning to lone depot park and after becoming an interesting human being over time i want to see how he adjusts not only that he's leading off for the angels which i found a little bit weird so let's see how he performs now in his later stages of his career back at this stadium now that he's not you know the spotlight of the team like he was back in in washington I'm surprised you didn't say and more. <laughs> I'm excited to see more if he comes into relief. <laughs> um, we have the pitching matchups up today. It's uh, Max Meyer versus Chase Silseth. You got Lazardo versus Tyler Anderson tomorrow. Um, and then AJ Puck going against Patrick Sandoval. Both Patrick Sandoval did not get off to a good start this season. Um, Neither did Puck. 
neither did Puck. So it's going to be the battle of who can uh, have the better bounce back game. Um, Lazardo hopefully was going to go more than five innings. You, you don't know. Just, you hope the offense just picks up, picks these guys up. Um, from these pitching matchups, who do you guys think has the? Well, look at that that last game. Who do you guys think has the uh, better chance of having a bounce back game? We'll start with Daniel. I would go. It's tough. I would say Patrick Sandoval has a better sh- chance. I think once again, see AJ Puck how he does with that lineup there. Um, I-, I think Patrick Sandoval just had those first game king- uh, kings opening day could be the jitters whatnot. Uh, again, they were going up against the Orioles, best team in baseball, bound to get runs, everything going on, going and offense there was stopped by Corbin Burns, so they really can't get anything going to help Patrick Sandoval. Um, I, I think he has a really good chance to bounce back. Again, A.G. Puck, I don't think this is the right lineup for him. Um, going up against Mike Trout, I could see Mike Trout having a really good day um, against Puck. I Hopefully I'm wrong, but I think Patrick Sandoval has a better chance. Um to up uh, to bounce back uh david your thoughts uh, i'm going to agree with that sentiment as well because sandoval has the history as a starter um you know we really haven't seen puck do any starting really beyond what we saw in spring training and even some of that was relatively limited so sandoval can lean on his experience as a starter in terms of um you know going through the routine and having his um you know, he, he's done this before, right? And we just haven't seen it from Puck yet. So, you know, hopefully Puck has the, the better bounce back, right? But I would, if I had to bet, it's probably Sandoval. I'll just say on Puck, the way that he struggled in particular in his first start, it wasn't, didn't seem to me like somebody that the conversion was at fault. It was somebody that whatever variety of reasons was very uncomfortable with himself and just not totally separate from like, the actual measurables that he has as a starter, like for whatever reason with his delivery and even the way that he was gripping his pitches, the way that he struggled was so uncharacteristic of him. And I'm on record as being very high on puck entering this year and feeling that he could have just as much success as a starter. as he has as a reliever. So I'm willing to just give him a mulligan on that first one. I I think he can fairly immediately round into a competent starter despite as ugly as things got on Friday night. We'll go to Nate, then John, and then we'll head off to prediction time. I'm with you. I don't think, I think they're both going to bounce back relatively decently. Um, I do think Sandoval going to do better though. He did face that tough Orioles lineup and I don't know. He's not facing that, uh, that quite a trouble lineup now. And uh, he's definitely not the 16 ERA type of guy like he is at the moment. Uh, I think him facing a, not as strong of a lineup as the Orioles is going to help him get back on track. But I do think Puck's going to do all right as well. And finally, John. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. I think I think that Sandoval is going to be the guy who's going to, going to definitely bounce back, considering I think it was David who said it, his pitching history. I think that's a big factor. He's already accustomed to pitching long stretches. Puck, on the other hand, was making you know his first. I, I do think, like Eli said, that puck does make a little comeback. So, in general, I th- I, I I do believe um, Sandoval is going to be the one that's going to get the upper hand. But puck is definitely going to improve. He's not going to look like Sean West. <laughs> All right. <laughs> really quickly, I want to say, is this Miguel Sano really on the Angels, Eli? Am I seeing this correctly? Yeah, he is. He was on a minor uh, league deal after having decent winter ball run. Um, is he's like five years removed from actually being. Miguel Snow. Yeah. And he was an interesting guy. So they're yeah, they're giving him a shot. And I don't know. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll see how he played enough to sneak onto their time. roster. But I, I think he, he I, from what I've seen, or we'll get into prediction time just coming up right about now. Um no none of our super subs so far are going with Miguel Sano and no other Angels MVPs aside from Mike Trout right here. Uh, made a slight alteration oh to God, the super sub prediction submission this year. It used to be on, on Twitter, but now either on our site or in our discord Marlins discord server, you can send it in right leading up to first pitch. So you still have like Brian Hoeing if you haven't done so already. Yeah. That includes a Ooh. Brian Hoeing pick. I already have a no. If I, I respect the hell out of that, you should, because I'm fairly sure that's the same will who won our 
prediction time last year very <laughs> narrowly edged out the rest of us. And so his he added a comment on this saying that he thinks Hoeing's going to do have a really masterful long relief outing, and then he's going to get sent down for a fresh arm right after having give him double points MVP Brian performance. Give so him yeah, double that point. he's not getting double points if Brian so, Hoeing yeah. is MVP. Still a lot of confidence despite coming off that sweep, understandably so, just because the Angels themselves are a pretty, they're at a talent deficit and they're on the road, all things considered. So still, yeah, a lot of optimism this early in the season. This is the pattern I see through the years. Early on, uh, there's that, it's really nothing you can do to dull that confidence until the losses really pile up. All right, it's now time to get into prediction time. Yeah, so let me just... Make sure that we're set up the right way. Turn off those. Get our background music fired up. Do we not have an intro video of you saying this is prediction time? Is that, is that not going to work? No, yeah, I still have the audio of that, but um, I'm working on remastering the video version of it as well. So, yeah, we'll go out uh, one at a time. We'll start with Noah. Your prediction. You start with me? Oh, no. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm gonna go. Oh, oh no, Pirates. the background still has the Pirates logo on it. Ah, <laughs> oh, so Eli, so close. <laughs> what about our video? What the heck? We have to proceed anyway. That is that's the oh. only one. I, well, maybe I can oh, edit it really quickly. We'll oh. Fix it in post. No, 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 no. Stall for like 25 seconds. Okay. Is a group oh, part. I can stall for a while. Yeah, you know, hold, I, on. I hold, on. This, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna make yeah. a long spiel. Hold can we yes. play the video, Isaac's video. <laughs> oh that's right oh, yeah we God. actually skipped the videos that we had in here so if one of you uh actually i'll, I'll just play it right here i think that should buy me enough time to fix the background all right marlins angels serious predictions isaac you are up first i think that the marlins actually sweep the angels this week and i'll give jake Berger the mvp a couple lefties in the in the series today. Alrighty, marlins radio steven strong making the surprise appearance two marlins out of three are, two out of three who's like MVP? two out of three um tim anderson all right, and I'm going to take Marlon's sweep, and I'm going to go Josh Bell's in series MVP. Back to you, Eli. Thank you, Tim Anderson. Wow. We got to have Steven on a podcast or a stream or something. He's been begging. Okay. So take two now for our actual panel right here. Got the background uploading. This is something new where we went the extra mile with actually customizing these backgrounds. There we go. For the particular series. Um, but, yeah. It gets better. Uh, let's try this on. again. Take two, and this time it's personal. Um, I'm going to go with the Marlins. Take the series uh, two out of game two, two games out of three. I'm fumbling already, uh, and mm -hmm. I think I'm going to go with what worked last time. I think Jake Berger is going to be your MVP. Going over to Daniel. Your prediction, sir. Ooh. Uh, first off, MVP, not this man behind me. As much as I wish it could be, I'm not picking six though. But I'm going to go Angels 2 out of 3. Um, now I'm firmly on the boat. The Marlins have to show me something if they want me to pick them. So if they're going to lose, continue to lose, I'll continue to pick against them. Angels 2 out of 3. I wasn't going to go Mike Trout. I'm going to go different. Nolan Shanuel gets on base almost every at bat. No, every at bat he's going to go on. Base. He's going to continue the streak. John Rodriguez, your predictions for this series, sir. I'll give the Marlins the benefit of the doubt. I think they come back. They get two out of three. My MVP is going to be this man right here, Jesus Sanchez. He had a big series back in Anaheim last year. And I think he's going to show the Angels who he is once again. David Fernandez, you're up. Go ahead. So I'm thinking the Marlins take two out of three here as well. Uh, and I think Luis Arias is going to get the bat going and he'll be the MVP for the Marlins. Nate. Let's hear from you. I'm going to keep the positivity going. I think the Marlins are going to come back and take two out of three. Angels are throwing two lefties this series, so I got Brian De La Cruz winning series MVP this time around. Ooh. To take us home, I've got to remember to do this every time. It's a Marlins series win. I'm going to show this on every time I actually take <laughs> the Marlins. Because I'm not doing anything with this baseball anyway. Marlins take two out of three. Jesus Lazardo builds upon his opening day start. He's even better this time around. I rarely go with pitchers as the MVP, but I think he's going to shove enough in a wire-to-wire -wire win in the middle of this series. And um, that is going to put them over the edge and get their first series win of 2024. Very good. 
We survived. We survived. Um, I might not be asked back to host anymore for obvious reasons because I'm terrible at it. Um, I guess I'll just stick to the Jeopardy stuff. Thank you, everybody, for watching. It is now 6.30. The Marlins game starts in 10 minutes. Um, roof is open, sun is shining, the tank is clean, and we are getting out of here. Uh, my name is Noah Berger. I was your uh, I was the host today. Eli Sussman, of course, behind the scenes, our founder. Daniel Rodriguez, Nate Karsmer, John, and, D and David, our guests. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Go Fish. Wait, who are we presented by?